Russian President Vladimir Putin is warning the U.S. and its allies that Moscow cannot be defeated in Ukraine. His remarks came yesterday during a speech to mark the 80th anniversary of the Soviet triumph in the Battle of Stalingrad. But he said that as nearly 200,000 Russian troops have been killed or wounded in Ukraine, that number according to the New York Times. The Times notes that U.S. officials say Moscow has been sending poorly trained recruits mm. to the front lines, uh, some that they've just pulled straight out of prison, resulting in hundreds of troops uh, being wiped out uh, daily. And, and, and Admiral, um, none of us could have ever imagined uh, that one year in, that Russia's uh, casualty count would be 200,000. And, and by the way, that may be a conservative estimate. And now, and now, the Times, of course, the story goes on to say, oh, but Putin's going to be able to keep his head down and, and, and keep fighting this war. Those of us who remember how Afghanistan ended, not so sure of that. Uh, there, there comes a point, even in, in Russian society, there even came a point in Soviet society where the mothers of, of young men said enough and the Soviet leaders had no choice but to listen. Interesting. Absolutely. And just to put that number in comparison, the 200,000 casualties in less than one year of war, just to put that in a context, um, in 20 years of war in Iraq and Afghanistan, 20 years, the U.S. tragically had 7,000 killed in action. Here we're approaching somewhere between 100,000 and 200,000. My view, that's unsustainable. My fact set would include the fact that the last time Putin called up a draft just a few months ago, a conscription, somewhere between 200 and 300,000 young Russian males of military age departed the pattern. They left the country. They're in Kazakhstan. They're in Eastern Europe. They are anywhere but inside Vladimir Putin's Russia. I think he's going to have a hard time sustaining this going forward. But I will close on this note before we celebrate too much. Uh, Putin mm -hmm. mentioned Stalingrad because, Joe, in a year of combat in Stalingrad, about a million Russians were killed. So he wow. will like drawing that comparison, and he will reach into Russian literature and point out mm -hmm. uh, looks like one day in the life of Ivan Denisovich. Russia, as Mika and her family knows, uh, can be a very difficult, very, very hard opponent. So yeah, the, the trend lines are going against Putin at the, more, at the moment in that land war, but we need to continue to watch him and, above all, provide the Ukrainians the material they need to push back on the next wave. 100 percent. Let's bring in New York Times reporter Anna Swanson, who writes about trade and international economics. She's been reporting on how Russia is importing Western products into the country despite sanctions. So um, it, has there been any uh, consequence to them in this respect, or are they still getting everything they need from the West in terms of um, the different products that are still going in, shipments from all over the world, actually? Well, I would say there have been consequences, and Russians are not getting everything that they need. Um, we're regularly hearing reports filtering out of Russia of people unable to access medicines or frustrated with the high price of goods on the shelves or inferior goods. Um, but overall, if you look at the trade data, um, data is showing that there have been these recent surges in trade with some of Russia's neighbors and allies. And that suggests that countries like Turkey, China, Belarus, Belarus, uh, the former Soviet republics, are stepping in to provide Russia with some of the goods that it used to get from the West before the invasion. And analysts estimate now that uh, Russia's imports are actually probably back um, to pre-war levels. Um, so I would certainly say the sanctions are having some consequences, but it does call it does raise questions about um, how influential the sanctions will be in really changing the course of the war. So, Anna, if they're evading sanctions on a range of goods, what about things that they need for repairing and restocking their military, for example, um, computer chips that, that, that are banned in terms of sales from the West, at least? Are they also, because I think one of the mysteries of what's happening in Ukraine is how the, Ameri how the Russian military has managed to hold out 
as long as it can in terms of resupply. Does it suggest they're getting what they need from China or from Iran or from other countries, India perhaps? I don't know. But something is happening that means they can carry on restocking their military uh, when the West thought it would be sooner than this that they would run out of the ability to do so. It's kind of a mixed picture. So um, their imports of semiconductors, for example, are down um, overall. But there has been a kind of surge in imports of these products to Russia from countries like China, um, from areas like Hong Kong. Uh, so, so you know, there are uh, changes in trade patterns globally that are really helping to um, get some of these products back into Russia. Um, you know, and it's important to to note that not everything is sanctioned, obviously. The West did not put sanctions on consumer goods like smartphones or medicines. Um, but, uh, you know, there is some, it does look like a suspicious picture as well uh, for mm -hmm. Russia trying to get around sanctions. And perhaps more to be done. Anna Swanson, thank you very much for your reporting this morning. Retired Admiral James Tavridis, thank you as always for being on the show this morning.